Miss Vanjie. 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 Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things only drag race fans understand. Alaska Todd in the house. For this list, we're looking at the most iconic phrases or ideas that only the show's avid viewers would fully understand. Which of these concepts do you love referencing? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Pork Chop This is your first chance to impress me and save yourself from getting the pork chop. She was the first queen who ever sashayed away on Drag Race. But Victoria Porkchop Parker's influence on the show in the years since has been undeniable. For one thing, Rue loves giving her shoutouts. The most dramatic example of this arguably took place during the season 9 finale. Hey, Porkchop! Girl, you know I always got a seat for you, honey. The host's famous Hey Pork Chop line was also included in Alaska's All Stars 2 Red You Wrote You verse. Who's that bitch that's on the top? Oh, wait, that's me. Hey Pork Chop. Parker then took on a significant role in season 13, which began with lip sync battles that resulted in half the contestants getting the pork chop. It's safe to say that to the uninitiated, these references could be easily misunderstood. Cover girl. <laughs> Number 9. Code Green The color green reminds me of fungus. Competitors be warned, sporting green on the main stage can be a bit of a risky move. Look at you all pretty in your pond scum green. Fans of the series and the queens themselves are aware that resident judge Michelle Visage hates the color. Funnily enough, the fact that you'd have to watch the show to know this came up during a season 9 roast of the beloved personality. In honor of your big night, I wore your favorite color, girl. Alexis Michelle took to the stage in full body paint, intending to get a rise out of the guest of honor. When the gag fell flat and flew over guest judge Tamar Braxton's head, the queen boldly asked if she'd ever seen the show. My question the whole entire time is, why is she green? <laughs> well, Tamar, have you ever watched the show? This insider fact also made moments like Tia Coffee suggesting Visage wanted to wear her design challenge concoction particularly hilarious. What do you think I'm gonna say? I think you're gonna say it's stunning and you should have been in the top because it's <laughs> a sensational garment. And in fact, you want to wear it yourself because it's so well constructed. Number eight, Miss. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. These words made Vanessa Vanjie Mateo an instant star. Although it's tough to be eliminated first, she made the most of her brief appearance on season 10 with this unforgettable exit quote. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. <laughs> The catchphrase had everyone cracking up and quickly became a go-to saying for Vanjie's competitors. Vanessa may be gone, but Vanjie lives on, honey. Vanjie! During the reunion, she shockingly revealed that the viral moment was completely improvised. In my head, I was not gonna go home, so I did not prepare no message to leave. <laughs> the queen admitted she hadn't prepared a proper speech and resorted to simply saying her own name while sashaying away as a result. But the funniest part was probably seeing Rue and Michelle's obsession with the phrase play out during the season. Angie. <laughs> Angie. Number seven, beast. And on the runway, category is beast. Couture. This was far from Alyssa Edwards' only iconic All Stars 2 saying. For instance, rigor Morris has become a hilarious synonym for rigged. If y'all send me home, it was rigged. <laughs> <laughs> rigor Morris, girl. It was rigor Morris, girl. But the Queen's habit of calling people a beast is truly one for the history books. We memorably heard it during the Reading is Fundamental mini challenge as Edwards laid into her old rival Coco Montrese. And that brings us to Coco Montrese. Boost. But perhaps the best use of the word came during the comedy duo Maxi Challenge. In a setup that was as simple as can be, Alaska asked her stage partner to describe Michelle Visage in one word. The rest was history. Alyssa, describe Michelle Visage in one word. Go. Boost! <laughs> The line was so iconic, in fact, that season 13 had a Beast Couture runway category. She's Beast in show. Number six, Cuckoo. How you doing, mis amores? 
Do you want to see my cuckoo? Although she didn't win either of the seasons she competed on, Cynthia Lee Fontaine is a drag race icon. She was a vulnerable and lovable presence on the show, and definitely earned the title of Miss Congeniality. However, you'd have to watch the series to understand her very frequent references to her cuckoo. Oh, how you doing, Miss Amores? Are you ready to see my cuckoo? Again? The invented term simply refers to her derriere and went on to become a second name for the queen. In one season 9 episode, Cynthia actually detailed the birth of her signature saying, When I was a child, mom doesn't want us to say bad words at home. Needless to say, it's one of the most unforgettable words in the drag race lexicon. And since that, I say cuckoo. So, do I have a big cuckoo too? Girl, you do. Well, I have a cuckoo, but you have a cuckoo, girl. Number 5. Lil Pound Cake. I'd like everyone to meet Lil Pound Cake. Her catchphrase is, you're not my real dad and you never will be. Though it sounds like a sweet concoction, this term doesn't refer to a dessert. Rather, it's the name of a character who's made two very notable appearances on Drag Race. Lil Pound Cake was born out of a Season 5 mini-challenge collaboration between Alaska and Lanasha Sparks. But her most famous outing occurred on the second season of All Stars. For the two looks in one runway, Alaska came out in a garbage bag type garment, only to unveil an immaculate recreation of the doll underneath. <laughs> it's little pound cake! The fun times didn't end there, as she then lip synced in the one of a kind look. The show loves to pay homage to itself, and this inside joke truly took the cake. Number 4. The Beyoncé Curse It has been done, but I can do her voice and I know what's funny and what's not funny about her. The most highly regarded drag race challenge is arguably the Snatch Game, where contestants attempt to impersonate celebrities with wit and humor. It often helps to portray well-known figures, so certain competitors have chosen to imitate Queen Bee. But it's usually not the best idea. Tyra is really lucky that she has immunity this week because her Beyoncé was not Beyoncé. It was Tyra talking. Look no further than Tyra Sanchez's uninspired take and Kenya Michaels' immature caricature to see why. I'm a survivor! I'm a survivor! She's a survivor! Even Asia O'Hara's interpretation was a flop. You're so tall. Yes, I am. Okay, shut up yes. now, girl. Shut up now. Hush now. Here. So it certainly seemed prudent to steer clear of the star altogether. Yet the curse was seemingly broken on All Star 6, when Trinity K. Bonet performed a Bee-inspired routine for the Hall of Fame halftime show. While she didn't need to capture the singer's every mannerism, she had the look, moves, and stage presence down pat. Number 3. Rolaska Talks Fans of the show know this to be a portmanteau representing the rock-hard alliance between Roxy Andrews, Alaska, and Detox. Rolaska Talks is Roxy, Alaska, and Detox. Rolaska Talks. Rolaska Talks was formed in Season 5, and their bond became particularly clear when they were vying for the top three positions at the expense of Jinx Monsoon. I did feel really that she was getting thrown under the bus by Rolodex here. Ro Relaxa Talks. Yeah, they're Rolodex. I think they were like, oh, let's get to the top three together. But it also reared its head during the second season of All Stars. Alaska and Detox both repeatedly chose to eliminate other competitors, like Alyssa Edwards and Tatiana, in order to save each other and Roxy. On one hand, you have Alaska, who has been slaying this entire competition, and then you have Alyssa, who has also been slaying. And then you have my best friend. It led to some controversy, especially considering the latter queen's subpar performances. Never in Drag Race history has a close friendship led to so much frustration among viewers. Number 2. Lip Sync for Your Life and Legacy The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. These performances are integral parts of the show, but only avid viewers understand the stakes. A lip sync for your life caps off the majority of Drag Race episodes. It involves the bottom two queens facing off by dancing and mouthing the words to a song in a bid to remain in the competition. Baby, Lip syncs for your legacy, in turn, have become an all star staple. The time has come. Did you lip sync? For your legacy! In 
certain seasons of the spinoff, the top two contestants perform in order to gain the power to eliminate a competitor. All of you will be lip syncing for your lives. Oh my god. There have been many different takes on these showdowns, like a six-way battle and the introduction of guest lip sync assassins. Ladies, it's time to present this week's lip sync assassin. But no matter what form they take, they are one of the most entertaining parts of any episode. That is what we call a lip sync for your life. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Walk into the room purse first. Bob the Drag Queen coined this phrase after her first season eight runway. Bob the Drag Queen, gone with the window. Yes, honey, lead with the bag. <laughs> Love it. Flase da. Pearl invented a new word somewhere between blasé and laissez-faire during her season seven stint. We're probably the two most kind of flasé da sort of like. You the most what? Like flasé da sort of. Are you saying laissez-faire? I think he's trying to say blasé and then add la di da on the end of it. But he said <laughs> flasé da. Yeah, a little flasé da. Well, I asked because I have an aunt flasé da. <laughs> Party City. Fifi O'Hara created a new shorthand for costumey drag during an explosive fight. Tired ass showgirl. Yeah, showgirl. At least I am a showgirl, bitch. Go back to Party City where you belong. Proportionizing. Eureka, Cameron Michaels, and Monet Exchange's clever term for crafting the perfect silhouette. So what I learned how to do was proportionizing. Yeah. Say it with us one, two, three. Proportionizing. Yeah. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the library is open. Because reading is what? Fundamental. When this announcement kicks off the perennial reading is fundamental mini challenge, a drag race newbie might assume that the queens are about to hit the books. But seasoned fans of the show know that these four words signal an impending shade fest. Violet Chachki, you keep training those corsets, girl. Pretty soon your waist size will be lower than your IQ. Drawn from the 1990 documentary Paris is Burning, reading involves directing witty jabs at one's peers. Shade comes from reading. Reading came first. Reading is the real art form of insult. Luckily for us, the library being declared open has led to some of the funniest moments in the history of the show. Peppermint, you need one. <laughs> Granted, things can sometimes get brutal, but we know that at the end of the day, it's all being done in good fun. Trixie. Now, a lot of people clock your makeup, but I totally get it. You know, you're just painting for the back of the room, which makes sense because that's where your audience collects if you remember to lock the door. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.